As a science diver, you will be asked to collect data underwater. And when you're designing your own experiments, it can be pretty daunting with all the different tools of the trade you have for sampling. But if you think about it long and hard, most of these follow some general principles. For example, right here we've got an RPC bar, that's for some random points, and we also have a meter bar to conduct a transect. If you're looking for some sort of unit of area, you might construct yourself a quadrat. Beautiful. That's for some density studies, and if you have different methods of collecting random points, well, all the better. That's an RPC chain. And let's not forget the meter tape. Your best friend and a fantastic tool for sampling. All right, we got our gear. Let's see what it can do. First up's the meter bar. You know what? How about an official introduction? Beautiful. Your meter bar, coupled with your meter tape, is a fantastic tool for transects. You've essentially created an area of one meter by however long you reeled out your meter tape to estimate the density and abundance of whatever it is you're looking for. Today, we're looking at nuts and bolt fish. Now, be very careful, because only what's under the bar counts. What's outside of it, even though you can see it, no go. That is perfectly fine. So make sure to constantly reference the meter tape and the bar, making sure that you are counting everything underneath it, but nothing outside of it. Now, once you're done with your transect, just don't lose the bar. Tuck it away, hold on to it, whatever you need to do. But let's imagine you do lose the bar, or you forgot it at home. You're at the meter tape, you're panicked, don't worry, evolution got you covered. There's my meter bar, right there at about my shoulder, and to the edge of my fingers is about a meter. So if I line up my shoulder and stretch out my arm, I should be able to get the exact same data as before. With a virtual meter bar, it's even more crucial than before to constantly reference that tape. Because if you drift even a little bit, just like your 21st birthday, what was in could be suddenly very much out. Time to recap on the meter bar. Stay in the bar, only counting what's under it. Don't lose the thing. But if you do, you can use a virtual meter bar, but then you must constantly reference that meter tape so you only count what you should. Okay? Okay. Now these meter bar methods will let you do what are called band transects, and those are standard fair into water, but a little bit time consuming. So if you need to subsample your density a little bit further, behold, the quadrat. That can get in the way, so BAM! Beautiful. Fold it up nice and pretty, and an official introduction. This is clearly big budget stuff. Okay, we need to subsample the density of these nuts and bolts at that 2 meter mark. To make your quadrat as big as you need, and then you are going to be very diligent about where you put that quadrat. You can either put it with one of the arms touching the 2 meter mark to the left, or you can have the quadrat straddle that 2 meter mark, or move it all the way over to the right with the other arm touching. Now it doesn't matter which method you pick, but at each data point on your meter tape, place your quadrat the same way every time. Take a look, by going lower, I got two points of interest. By straddling the same meter mark, I wound up with four. And by moving up, I went right back down to two. So place your quadrat in the same way every time. Be consistent or your data will suffer. Also, when filming a tutorial, try not to look like an idiot pulling this thing apart because Steve will be watching and you're going to feel pretty dumb until about right here. Okay. Don't lose that thing, hold on to it with your hands, or tuck it away, whatever you need to do. After all, science depends on you not losing your quadrat. How'd I do, Steve? We're literally diving in my tears, that was so bad. Ah, oh, Papa Steve, always so supportive. Now one thing you might find yourself doing with quadrats beyond counting what's inside that area would be measuring specimens. So grab your calipers, I had mine tucked under the bungee of my compass, and measure away. And once you've measured something, toss it outside of the quadrat. Don't double dip your data, because if you do duplicate your data points, your dad will be duly disappointed with your duplicity, and that's enough of that. Now, I don't know how much data you can remember all at once, so jot it down every so often so you don't forget, and then move on to your next quadra without losing those calipers. But maybe the calipers you have on hand are too small for what you're trying to measure. That's why you should choose your weapon carefully. Maybe calipers will work, but it might be better to have a ruler on the side of your slate for bolt fish. But if you are hell-bent on having calipers and yours were too small, you can make what's called a transfer gauge, so you can measure what you're looking for, and then transfer that measurement to a ruler. Now, if you're just interested in a size class, you can use what's called a go-no-go -no -go gauge. This one's custom-made for weights. It's very simple. No-go, no-go. Uh, that's a go. Okay, so let's recap quadrats. Be consistent in your positioning. Don't lose the thing. Don't double dip your data and make sure to pick the right measuring tool for the job. Well, those are some tools for measuring densities and areas, but what about characterizing the substrate, what everything is living on? 
Well, to do that, you need to look at points along the bottom and identify what's there. You can generate those points randomly, maybe with a chain with colorful zip ties on it, or maybe a bar with a line with random knots, but you can also look at uniform points along the bottom, and what better tool than the meter tape, all of its points are uniformly distributed. So let's talk UPC and RPC. Now UPC stands for Uniform Point Contact. So once we've reeled out our meter tape, we can pick increments, in this case 50 centimeters, to look uniformly at what the substrate is made out of. Now in the pool, of course, that's not going to be too challenging, but just get in the habit of looking underneath that point, remembering a few of them, and then jotting those notes down every so often. Now if random points are cool, then you can use what's called an RPC, or a random point contact. Right. This right here is what's called an RPC bar. It has a line with five random knots tied in it, and looking underneath those knots is how you'll characterize the substrate. Now to get more data points once you've laid down your bar, just flip that line over and get five extra points for your total. But make sure that you are taking notes every so often because if you forget what you sampled, well, that kind of defeats the purpose. Now the RPC bar is good if everything's pretty even, but on uneven terrain, you can use an RPC chain. Hook that into the tape where you need and then throw it as far away as you can, making sure that it stretches out far enough. Then use those random zip ties to characterize the substrate, making sure to take a note break somewhere in the middle, maybe every five, so that you don't forget what you've looked at. Now once you've completed your RPC, go ahead and write down that data and we are going to head over to the next meter mark. The best part about the RPC chain is you can just pick that sucker up and wrap it around your hand for transportation. After all, just don't lose your sampling gear on your way to your next point. All right, let's recap UPCs and RPCs. Take notes. The whole point you're underwater is to get that data, so make sure you're writing it down. And then finally, just don't lose any of your sampling gear. After all, if we manage to lose stuff in the pool, I don't hold much hope for us out in the ocean. Okay, well maybe that was a little bit pessimistic. We'll see you in next video for sampling methods in the ocean.